Now, Danny Rose has said he can't wait to retire from football because of how the sports authorities deal with racism. The England's national and his teammate Callum hudson Adoy were abused by fans during their match against Montenegro last month, and the 28-year-old now says he can't wait to see the back of the game. Well, I'm joined now by Kevin George, a former professional footballer and author who now provides mental health training for football. It's really good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Shame that we're once again having this conversation in the 21st century. Yes, yeah, no, it's, it's a shame, but I'm not surprised at all, to be honest with you. It's the same patterns that turn up all the time. Something happens, uh, we have a conversation about it because it's a trending topic, and then we move on. The Montenegro disciplinary hearing will take place next month, but the argument that we are getting from uh, footballers, former footballers and, and present footballers is that the penalties simply aren't tough enough. Yeah, it's true, but we know, we've known this for a long time. I think it's time that the players utilise their power, and it's sad because they shouldn't have to do this, but... I feel that they have to take action themselves and walk off the pitch, to be honest with you, because as we've known that the governing bodies uh, are prioritising business. And if that's the case, walking off will affect their business and they'll prioritise it. Um, would it only really work if the players walked off the pitch if they were followed by their teammates? Yes, um, it's about being a team. And we always talk about being a team when, it, when the goal is three points. But I feel that this is much more, this is worth more than three points. And we'll see how much you know, how, how strong these teams really are. I don't think players should walk off by themselves because it, they'll continue to be isolated like they are anyway, like the likes of, say, the um, hudson Adoys, the the Roses in the past, and the Alucus and Tom Ferdinand's or the Keens of Juventus. So I think, no, it's a team game. And I think players should strategize more. So the likes of, say, Harry Kane, um, maybe being the leader and saying, OK, if this happens, because Montenegro is seen as a high-risk place, um, have a strategy in place. This is what we're going to do if this happens. And ideally, this being um, walking off the pitch and taking action. Do you also think that this perhaps is a case of people in glass houses? I mean, we have our own issues with racism um, during the football game. You only look at what happened to Raheem Sterling um, in October when Manchester City were playing Chelsea. He was subjected to racist abuse. I mean, that is just one example. I mean, it's not just... Uh, you don't just have to go to the Balkan states for uh, black players to, to uh, receive this kind of abuse. I agree. Um, we have a, an issue here as well. And I think the same uh, solution we should apply it to as well. At club level, same thing. Have a strategy in place. Skipper leads, um, you know, make sure that he initiates that. So, for example, if there is racism, the, the players look to him. He says, OK, or her in the women's game. That's it. We're going to go. We walk off that pitch together. And it could be a case of not just their team, but... Players mix, you know, they play, um, even though they play against each other at club level, a lot of them are teammates internationally. So it could be a case of both teams leaving the pitch. And then now the player's not isolated, but actually the fan who actually makes the comment becomes isolated. Were you subjected to racist abuse when you were playing? And if you were, just tell us what it does to your psyche. What does it do to a young black player who is doing, you know, playing the game that he loves, something that he's always wanted to do, or she? Um, and, and what effect does it have on them? Um, I was quite lucky in the sense that I never really had much in terms of... I had it at club level at my club at the training ground where you had black players sitting together and you would have uh, white players saying, oh, look at the brothers. But I never... My career never got to the level of Danny Rose and the Sterlings of this world, so I wasn't exposed to the other stuff. But it definitely affects the players because if you think about it, when you are the victim, you become the perpetrator. So I, I named people like Anton Ferdinand and Ennio Aluku because, and even the other day, Keane, where Benucci said he's 50% to blame. It's amazing that you're a victim and then you become a perpetrator and then almost you're just left behind until the next trending topic of racism comes by and you're there to manage it and pick up the pieces. Uh, you, I mean, I'll be surprised if Aluku and Ferdinand said it didn't affect their career and others. So I, I can't speak for them because everyone's different and they manage situations differently. But for sure it's affecting them. It affects people that are not even in the team. It affects me, it affects everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading comments by the president of UEFA who um, said that uh, actually referees should be brave and they should be the ones who completely scrap the games if they do uh, witness or hear any racial abuse or racial chanting uh, taking place during the game. I mean, wh what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that you'd welcome, referees cancelling the game? I think we're, we need people to have the same skills that we want on the pitch, which is bravery and courage. And so we need players to do that, but also we need referees to do that. Unfortunately, when you look at referees and, and how the game's gone historically, we know that if you get fouled in the box in the first five minutes, you're unlikely to get that penalty. But you will get it in the 70th minute, which means if a, if a referee is not brave enough to give a penalty, they're not going to be brave enough to stop a game.
Kevin, good to talk. Southern Salesman will be having this chat again sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,